The lesson for today is inverse relation. And if you look at the first part of this lesson here, uh, for it to be an in inverse, you notice that the domain and range will switch positions. For example, if you look at the top diagram, it shows the relation R and its inverse. The range of the relation is its domain of the inverse, and the domain of the relation is the range of the inverse. So you notice that here, in these two diagrams, the domain and range has switched positions. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and switch the domain and the range. Another key concept that we're going to go over is the inverse of f. It says the inverse of a function f is denoted by the inverse of f. That's how you read it, the inverse of f. That negative 1 looks like an exponent. It means the inverse of f. Okay. Now, we are going to go over composition, but not today. And we're going to use composition to verify whether two functions are inverse of each other. So for the first example, it says, what is the inverse relation of S? And it says, we have a table X and Y, and there the table the values are shown. So to find the inverse of F, S, remember how you do the inverse of S? It's like that, inverse of S. You, you have a domain and you have the range, but now they're going to switch. So instead of 0, negative 1, it's going to be negative 1, 0. Instead of 2, 0, it's 0, 2. Instead of 3, 2, it's going to be 2, 3. Instead of 4, 3, it's going to be 3, 4. Part B, it says, what are the graphs of S and its inverse? So if you notice, the first one was negative 1, uh, negative 1, 0, okay. 0, negative 1. So the first one's going to be negative 1, 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different color. Negative 1, 0. 0, 2. 2, 1, 2, 3. And then uh, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you notice that if we were to draw a line, something appears. If we draw the, the line y equals x, you notice that the red and the black dots they're kind of like a mirror image across the y equals x. So that behaves like a mirror. That's one of the characteristics of an inverse relation, that they will be a mirror of each other over y equals x. So now that we understand the basic understanding of an inverse, we're going to apply this to finding the inverse of, of a function, or a linear function. It says write the inverse of the function. If you describe your relation or function by the equation, x and y, you can switch the x and y to get the equation for the inverse. So remember that f of x is the same thing as saying y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 4. And we notice that in the inverse relation, we were switching the x and the y. So what do we have? We have x equals negative 4 thirds y plus 4. What we're going to do now is we're going to solve for y. So the first step is to isolate y by itself. So we have, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. So we have x minus 4 is equal to negative 4y over 3. You notice that we have a 3 in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by both sides by 3. So remember these 3 will cancel. So what are you left with? Uh, 3x minus 12. I went ahead and applied the distributive property. And you have negative 4y. And then the last step is to divide by negative 4. So our inverse equation 
is going to be 3x minus 12 divided by negative 4. I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. So you have negative 3x over 4 and negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. Now the next question it says that we want to graph both our inverse and our function on the same graph. So I'm going to go ahead and write our function which was um, use green our blue here we have f of x equals uh, negative 4 thirds x plus 4 and then I'm going to use a different color to denote the inverse I'm going to go ahead and move it up at this point if you want to use decimals you can I'm going to go ahead and graph it on this Cartesian plane and I'm going to start with uh, I'm going to start with the function the original function so we have the y-intercept which is 4 0 4 0 1 2 3 4 and I notice that the slope is negative 4 over 3 so you're going to go down 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 and you can repeat this 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 I'm applying the slope 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 and I'm going to go ahead and graph it and this is our original function so this is f of x equals negative 4 thirds x plus 4 I'm going to go ahead and graph the inverse so the y-intercept is 0 3 0 1 2 3 and I notice the slope is negative 3 over 4 so you go down 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 you can also go in the other direction 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 connect the points and this is the inverse now one of the characteristics of the inverse it should be reflected over y equals x and I'm going to go ahead and graph y equals x So that's our mirror. Okay. We're going to graph this function, which is y equals x squared. And I want to go ahead and make a table right here. I want to start with negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, negative 3 squared is 9, negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and 3 squared is 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and graph negative 3, 9, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0 is the vertex, and then of course it's a reflection over the y-axis, 9, so here's our function. Now we have the square root. And we have its inverse, which is going to be plus or minus square root of x. That's what 
that's what the inverse is going to be. So we'll start with we'll start with nine four one zero, and we have the square root of nine is plus or minus three. The square root of four is plus or minus two. The square root of one is going to be plus or minus one, and the square root of zero is just zero. So we have zero one one. One, and I'm going to use a different color. One, 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 two, three, four, one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. And then you have negative one, you have negative two, one, two, three, and then you have negative three. Now you notice that if I draw the y equals x, this here is the mirror. And we have y equals x. And you notice that the inverse is reflected over y equals x. And we know that the inverse is not a function. But if we wanted to make it a function, we would restrict the domain. How would we do that? We'd say f inverse of f equals the square root of x. And we would say the domain would have to be x is greater than or equal to 0. x x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay?